All right, ladies and gentlemen, um, I'm going to leave a video link below. It's regarding this prosperity gospel false prophet named Rich, R-I-C-H, capital V-E-R-A, Vera. I was watching this video that he did with uh, Sid Roth, and he said weird stuff. He was promoting false prophets like Benny Hinn. Benny Hinn, um, H-I-N-N, -N, is this man that uses donations from his uh, cult. He's running nothing more than a cult. He, he's of the devil. To buy jets and houses and planes. And he charges astronomical fees to attend his sermons, which are sermons of Satan. Um, you can Google this man, false prophet Benny Hinn. And you'll find a lot of videos on him as well as Rich Vera. The reason why I'm bringing this forward to you is because I was looking at the comments to Sid Roth's. And obviously people were questioning... Sid Walsh videos. Sid Walsh videos regarding Rich Vera. One person said, uh, this guy's a false prophet because um, he's promoting Benny Hinn and other things he said. Um, I'm going to leave, like I said, leave that video link below so you can watch it for yourself. But this man promotes the prosperity gospel. He says something in there about how the Lord Jesus Christ wants to bless man with earthly riches. And that's not true. Do I believe God will bless you with riches? It's possible. But as long as you use those riches for the glory of God and help someone else that, ha that needs help. Okay? But the way this guy explained it, he said that God wants to bless you with finance finances for you so you could be rich. That's like the prosperity gospel. Plus, he said all the weird stuff. He was promoting the Pope Francis, the Pope that's in, that's the Pope now, Peter, Peter Francis, whatever his name is, um, basically saying that, uh, saying, saying indirectly that he's a man of God and um, now he's going to help propel the gospel, you know, in other words, spread the gospel. Well, the Pope doesn't believe in Jesus Christ. He believes anyone can be saved without repentance and confessing your sins or going through a water baptism. That all sinners will go to heaven, even with sin. You don't need to be, you don't need to confess your sins. You don't need to repent. You don't need to go through the correction so the sins can be washed away by the blood of the Lamb. He's basically saying that um, any sinner can go to heaven. That's what the Pope says. And he also says that Jesus Christ failed on the cross. Which is not true. Jesus Christ was, was a success on the cross. It's not Jesus Christ's fault that mankind cannot make the right choices. Mankind's responsible for their choices. That's the way it is. Just because you have a miserable life or you make stupid choices, you cannot blame God for that. That sounds crazy. Forgive the uh, words, the verbiage that I'm using. But I'm just being real. I literally have people telling me, well, why does God let these people? It's not God's fault. Calamities happen in the world. It's unfortunate. Everything it says in the Bible has an appointed time, has an appointed season. Okay? But it's not God's fault. Because a lot of time people commit suicide. It's not their fault. God can see in advance when a person commits suicide. Okay? You can't expect God to be like, okay, save that person's life, stop them from committing suicide. Well, you are an adult. You need to stop making the wrong choices. If you're thinking of committing suicide, maybe you should make the right choice not to. People end up in situations that gets them killed because they make that choice. You can't blame God. Unfortunately, natural disasters happen. You have to understand, ladies and gentlemen, I've explained this to you all, that the enemy likes to wreak havoc and calamities on humankind. They like to cause pain, and they like to cause death. Jesus Christ does not take innocent life. Satan does. Remember that. And that's not God's fault. Okay? Going back to the topic at hand, this, this person then goes on to say other weird stuff, like Obama's going to repent to Jesus Christ. Obama's beyond repentance because he blasphemed God. He defied God. He said things like... Oh, USA is no longer a Christian nation. Well, that big-eared, okay, scrotum face, excuse my expression, does not speak for all Americans because I'm not a Muslim. 
He says that this this nation's a Muslim nation. Then he also says, Obama says this, that um, the future doesn't belong to those that slanders Prophet Muhammad. Well, Prophet Muhammad was a murdering scumbag and a pedophile. So I'm going to slander him. Free speech says I can. And it's a fact. So Obama blasphemes God more than once. He had uh, a Muslim imam, a Satanist, pray in a church before. He is not, he is, he is allowing a Baal temple to be built in New York. You know, he doesn't come to the aid of Christians. He's always helping Muslims. He, he visited the Muslim Brotherhood terrorists. He's always a, trying to appease terrorist Muslim nations. He's a Muslim. When we, when, when he decided to accept refugees, he turned the Christians away and sent them back to the war zones, but he took a bunch of pedophile Muslims. So he's beyond repentance. He's blasphemed God more than once. So this false prophet, Rich Vera, said that in one of his visions, Obama cried out to Christ. In one of his visions, Pope Francis was preaching the gospel or something like that. In one of his visions, he also said something about Ben Hinn, like I said, being a man of God. Ben Hinn's a false prophet. Obama blasphemed God, and, Ob and so did the Pope. He said Christ failed on the cross, and Christ never did. He, and he also said something else, that, that mankind shouldn't have a relationship with Christ. You need a relationship with Christ, because Christ is the bridge to the Father. Jesus Christ is God. He's the truth. The narrow way and the gate. He is the way. So this Rich Vera is a false prophet. And I'm not promoting Sid Roth either. He's just as much of a false prophet as Rich Vera is because he promotes Benny Hinn and other false prophets. These false prophet vultures, ladies and gentlemen, flock together. And then when there's a bunch of sheep that are confused, then you see the, the vultures starting to like circle the sheep ready to devour them. You see the lions, counterfeit lions, going to and fro, ready to devour the, devour the innocent sheep. So, I discerned a video. Rich Vera was never sent by God. He said some other stuff, how God told him that there was going to be uh, rain in California, and that there was not going to be um, any drought. I think that's what he said. Because I looked at clips of the video. He had some kind of vision about California. How in California it rained right after he said that it was going to rain. No, Argentina. He said it was going to rain in Argentina and the next day it rained. I looked and researched it. Okay? He told the Argentinians, look, it's going to rain tomorrow. I researched it. It didn't rain the very next day. It rained like a month later. Therefore, he's a false prophet. You have to also remember, ladies and gentlemen... The enemy can perform lying signs and wonder, even if possible, to deceive the very elect. And, and to back up the message that I'm telling you is from Christ, that he never sent Rich Vera. I'm going to read a few verses of um, Isaiah chapter 5. Starting at verse... Um, starting... At verse, I want to say this is verse number 16. I'm going to let you see it for yourself. But the Lord of hosts shall be exalted in judgment, and God who is holy shall be hallowed in righteousness. Then the lambs shall feed in their pasture, and in the waste places of the fat one stranger shall eat. Woe to those who draw iniquity with cords of vanity. And sin as if it were a cart rope. That say, let him make speed and hasten the work. That we may see in and let the counsel of the Holy One of Israel draw near and come. That we may know it. Woe to those who call evil good and good evil. Who put darkness for light and light for darkness. Who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Woe to those who are wise in their own eyes. And prudent in their own sight. Woe to men mighty in drinking wine, at, I'm sorry, at drinking wine. Woe to men valiant for mixing intoxicating drink, who justify the wicked for a bribe, and take away justice than the righteous 
take away justice from the righteous man. Therefore, as the fire as the fire devours the stubble, and the flame consumes the chafe, so their root will be as rottenness, and their blossom will ascend the dust. Descend the dust. That means God's basically saying here, um, these type of false prophets called good evil and evil good. They think they're doing God a service. Um, a lot of times, but they're not. A lot of times they don't even realize that they're actually possessed with a false divination spirit, much like this rich Vera, on top of that a Jezebel. It's a witchcraft spirit. Um, because they have rejected the law of the Lord of hosts and despised the word of the Holy One of Israel. Therefore, the anger of the Lord is aroused against his people. He has stretched out his hand against them and stricken them. And the hills tremble. Their carcasses were in refuse in the midst of the streets. And I just talked to you guys about carcasses, so to speak. It says in the word of God, I believe it's Matthew 24, that when there's carcass, you'll see the vultures start to circle. Okay? Or when there's sheep, carcass represents sin. Vultures are unclean, so they obviously drawn to dead meat, which is sin. So basically, God is saying that these workers of iniquities are the carcass full of sin that are devoured by vultures, which again are unclean as well. Um, their carcasses were refused in the, in the midst of the streets. For all this, his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. He will lift up a banner to the nations from afar and will whistle to them from the end of the earth. Surely they shall come with speed. Swiftly, no one will be weary or stumble among them. No one will slumber or sleep. Now will the belt on their, nor will the belt on their uh, loins be loosed. The belt of truth as part of the armor of God. Nor the strap of their sandals be broken. That's part of the armor of God. Uh, that's the, the sandals represents walking and preaching the truth, the gospel. Whose arrows are sharp and all their bows bent, the horses and hooves that seem to flint. I'm going to stop there. So God is saying He's going to deliver His people, the lost ones, from false prophets like this. And um, these workers of iniquities have pretty much been judged. I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, when you. You listen to people like this. You got to be careful. The Lord says in the word to judge a person righteously, to discern good fruits from evil fruits so you don't get deceived and sucked up into deception. So I'm going to stop you here. On, I'm asking you to test this message and see if what I tell you is true. But you guys need to understand that people like this, the Bible warns about how false prophets are going to arise in the last days. The Bible warns also about being extremely careful, okay, who you listen to, test the spirits, test my spirits as well, okay. If you look at uh, Ephesians chapter 4 verse 9, it warns about do not grieve in the Holy Spirit. It warns about uh, therefore putting away lying, let each one of you speak truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. Okay? That's confirmation again. That's verse 25, Ephesians chapter 4. That what I'm telling you is led by the Holy Spirit. But I'm asking you to test the spirits and talk to Jesus Christ and get your own confirmation. You need to be careful with false prophets like this. You can't simply go on a whim and run away with what they're saying because you like what they hear and you're... Letting them tickle your ears. You got to be careful, guys and girls. You got to be careful.